forward to the call. Excellent. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to my protege or mentee at Meharry, Kia Brooks, Dr. Kia Brooks, third year student. It, it, it came so fast, I was thinking it was uh, second year. Now, when did we uh, when did we get introduced? I guess first year, but last year was was pandemic, so we didn't really get a chance to communicate. So yeah. this year is is kind of the first time. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and uh, how you got to Mary. Where did you do undergrad and so forth? Hello, I'm Kia Brooks. Um, I'm from Monroe, Louisiana. I did undergrad at Dillard University, where I got my bachelor's in biology. So. Um, I, I got interested in Meharry because Dr. Hildreth came to my school my junior year. And so the uh, the lady over the pre-health society over at uh, Dillard, she uh, assigned me to be his ambassador. Mm -hmm. So I kind of fell in love with Meharry from him and the way he introduced it. And so I ended up applying and getting an interview, got accepted. So now I'm here in my third year. And so I'm definitely happy with my decision. So That's yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Now, do you have any siblings? I have two sisters. One, she's uh 30 and the other 17. Okay, okay. So you fit right there in the middle and <laughs> uh, and leading and, and doing a great thing. Now let me ask you, uh, from Monroe, Louisiana, do uh is that uh where you plan to return or you don't know exactly what the plan is yet? or once you leave Meharry? Um, I'm really open to whatever God is going to lead me to. If it leads me back home, I'm open to that. Um, I love back home. I do feel like I have a lot to give because of my roots. And I was raised by my grandmother. So I do have a lot of love back there. So mm -hmm. I'm just pretty much open to wherever, like I said, God is going to take me. So. I think that is is great, and and um, so I'm trying to remember how we were connected. As as your I'm I'm your mentor through Meharry, and I think someone reached out to me and asked me if I would mind being a mentor, and I was like, that is great. <laughs> I, I I would love to be a mentor, and I I'm remiss I haven't been getting together with you. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is is actually the first time we've done the face to face. And uh, it's just good because I want to, to be an example and show some leadership for Dr. Brooks and, and, uh, and the path that she wants to take in the future. So I asked her to send me some questions and she sent me some mentoring questions. I won't put them on the screen, but I will read them. Uh, number one, she asked, was being an entrepreneur dentist always the end goal? Um, you know, uh, Dr. Kia Brooks, Kia, I've been calling her Sia because her name is spelled CIA, it's Kia. But um, yeah, when, you know, I, I became interested in entrepreneurship when I was in undergrad and I was selling clothes at, at the mall and I was, it, it was a men's clothing store and, and there was some hustlers there. And I remember this young white kid asked me, he was, you know, he was telling me, Jerry, when I, when I uh, graduate, I'm going to, he was in college as well. He's, he was, he's going to become an entrepreneur. He said, you don't know what that means, do you? Do you? And I really, I didn't. I was like, oh, hell yeah, I know what entrepreneur is, you know. So I, uh, I, I, I kind of had a vague idea. And most people just have a vague idea. So I looked it up. And it became something that I said, that's what I want to do. I always wanted to be in business for myself. And being a dentist allowed you to be, because that was pretty much the only ones. By the time I was, even when I was in school, uh, physicians were becoming, you know, hospital employees. Dentists can own their own business. So that was the thing that kind of pushed me. I said, yeah, I've always, my dad, he was a hustler. He didn't really have any business. He, he did have a loop, but he always had his own little thing going and made his little money, my brothers, everybody. So I kind of come from a family like that. And then, ironically, when I left Meharry and I'm working and, and things were going right, and someone asked me something similar, and one of my classmates said, well, yeah, you put it in the school book. And I was like, yeah, he said, in the yearbook, that's what you said. You wanted to be an entrepreneur and a dentist. I had to go back and look it up. I was like, damn, I said that way back then. 
But you know, uh, Doc, if there's one big uh, thing I could uh, pass along to you, it would be define right now what the goal is. And if the goal is to be an entrepreneur and be in business for yourself, it, you need to go ahead and claim that, stake it out, know what your goal is, and then try to set a height, how far you want to go, and make it really big so that your mind, you're like, wow, are you going there? And then you have to tell yourself, you're damn right, I'm going there. That's what I'm going. You got you to gotta really aim high. So set your, your aim really, really high. So that's that's the one thing, and I, I actually I had something I wanted to share my screen. I'm going to try this, and I don't know whether it worked. Let me see if I can. Oh, okay. I do have a couple of things here that I and now let me put my glasses on. Oh, here it is. This is just some hand scribble notes. But I, 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 I the first thing on there was an entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur? Can you see my screen, Doc? Yeah, I can see it. Uh -huh. Okay. So being an entrepreneur, most people don't really, I'm going to tell you from my definition of an entrepreneur, it's a business person that takes risk. And I'm, I'm later I'm doing a, a video for some junior CEOs. A CEO is an executive and that you can hire CEOs and they run the business. But, the, and sometimes the entrepreneur is the CEO. But make no doubt about it, the entrepreneur is the one who steps out there and take the risk. And when you're out front and you take all of the risk, you're leading everything. It kind of goes back to what my dad used to say is take everyone's consent, but use your own judgment. In the end, you're like George Bush said, you're the decider in chief. That you have to make all the decisions. If it's good, you should take the credit. If it's bad, you take the credit for it. So it happens on your watch. Everything is about being that, that leader and making those decisions. And the good thing is, and this is the thing I'm, I'm pushing my son on right now is, I know he's kind of timid and hesitant when he's playing basketball now, not shooting. And I think he got, became afraid to pull the trigger when you're out there, whatever. You, you know, especially I didn't come from anything. I there was 11 kids in my family. We were dirt poor, didn't have anything. So everything I get above, you know, just what regular salary is gravy. So if I lose it, I started with nothing anyway. So uh, be willing to risk some things. I think that, and, and also a lot of times I think people are waiting on all the lights to turn green before they drive across town. It's not gonna happen. You gotta get out there and, and just start your mission and it will start to happen. Now under there, I put avatar and niche. I can come back to that, but your niche or your niche, I call it the sometimes, is who you define, what you, who are you going to go after? Because you, as, as much as you need to define who you uh, are going to serve, you also kind of define who you're not going to serve. That way you're not trying to be all things to everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, you don't have to specialize or, or go and do a specialty but you need to pick something that you say, this is what I'm gonna become really, really good at. And that, that kind of goes back to, uh, what's his name that talks about uh, 10,000 hours, uh, 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 Malcolm Glid Gladwell, Malcolm Gladwell, at 10,000 hours of anything, you're gonna become extremely good. You'll become an expert. So go ahead and put in 10,000 hours going in one direction. If you're all around, you're not going to get your 10,000 hours focused in one direction. Okay, number two, I'll jump back up there, future vision. Always skating to where the puck is going, as, uh, as we said, what's his name, the, the great uh, 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 hockey guy. Uh, anyway, you skate to where the puck is going, because if you're skating where it's at, you're too late. You're always future. What is, what's going to be happening? next year down the road where is it going so your vision you build your vision based on anticipating where things are going all right and you set your goal in that direction because sometimes people will set a goal but in reality it can't get you where you're trying to go you have to know that this is is going to get me if i accomplish this then i'm going to have what i want to have because this will get me there and, and most of the time, it's not doing the same thing everybody else is doing. And that's the thing, like I said, you're taking some risk because you're deviating off the, the path and you're going, you're trying to look ahead. 
And most people around you are going to be saying, oh, the kid, don't do that. This is what everybody else is doing. This is what everybody's doing now. But if you do what everybody else is doing, you're going to get the same results as everyone else. So if you want to get different or higher results, you're going to have to uh, force yourself to take some risk. And, and, but the law of probability is on your side because if, if um, and, and this, I, I, about the only sport I really watch is, uh, is basketball. But think about this, if, if, in basketball, a guy can go to the Hall of Fame if they're shooting 37, 38%. That's lower than 40%. That means you can miss six or seven shots out of 10 and you still are, are banging it. But the thing I think in life is that most people are afraid to take risk because I don't know whether it's because they don't want someone to say, see, you made a mistake or you're wrong. Or is it that society kind of trains us that you can't make mistakes, you know? So that's something you need to, to always kind of think about. And, and then the thing of the, the law of probability and you getting them right and trying enough things by trying a whole bunch of things, now you're going to start to, every time you know if I try and I put forth this amount of effort and I go at this thing and this is what I know, you start to have faith and confidence and belief that you're going to get the results that you want, you see? So that's the thing, take action and, and action cures the fears. And I'm going to pause there, go back to one of yours. But these are just some, some notes I was making, Doc. And, and if you follow these, I'm telling you, it'll get you there. But let's go to your second question, which is, how did you develop a business plan? Oh, good one, good one. Okay. All of them, I told you, all of them are good. A business plan, I, you know, I've tried those things off the shelf and where you say fill in this and fill in that, where you're going to get the money. But really and truly, it's, it, the business plan is this. Set a goal and set a time when you're going to get there. And then you try like hell, everything that happened, you know, I was sourcing funds from anywhere I could get at one time at the highest interest rate. I hate to even tell you know, how much I was paying, but you know, because if I go the traditional route, I was almost a file bankruptcy. I'm, no one's gonna loan me money. So I had to go around it. And my thing is you set the goal and especially where I'm coming from, poor black, you know, a lot of the roads or pathways that were open for others I couldn't necessarily go that way. So I take the path of least resistance or go around the obstacles that are in my path. But the thing is, you got to get there. And whatever it is, once your goal and you set a date, that's a big thing. You know, I took some courses under uh, Tony Robbins. One of the big things I remember from one of his lectures was schedule it. You want to get something done? Schedule it. You know, just like uh, I had talked about us doing this. Uh, this recording and you finally said, oh, well, when are we gonna do it? Which was good because then I had to schedule it. Now I was committed. I was like, damn, now I gotta do it. I, I've already put it on the schedule. If you wanna get something done, schedule it and then tell some and announce it to somebody. They're gonna say, oh, so you're doing this on this date or you said you were gonna be there. Sometimes it falls short, but you gotta go ahead and put it on the schedule. So that is my business plan. I just, I, I, I put a target but then, you know, I try to also, um, when I'm looking at something that I want to achieve, I want to, um, I want to vet the process. I want to see whether this is really something that can actually bear fruit. And if it does, like I said, is it in the abundance, the amount that I want? Mm -hmm. Because before you commit yourself to a journey, you really want to know, is it a worthwhile journey? And if not, Maybe it's, it's wasting your time. Maybe you need to aim higher because the thing also, Doc, is this. If you work, there's only 24 hours in a day. You got to get some sleep, whatever. But if you work at a, a job and you're, you're making whatever, uh, uh, you know, $100,000 uh, and you're working a hard, hard, it, it's the same eight hours a day if you were making a million dollars. You still put in eight hours, so you might as well if you might as well aim higher and just you know try to accomplish more by saying, well, I'm aiming higher, so I have to do things a little bit differently if I'm going for a million than I am if I'm going for a hundred thousand. You know, so that is that's a good place to put your plan is just aim high and then work backwards. Of course, 
you need things like uh, you need to look at the finances and then how you're going to achieve, how you're going to put a team together. But the first thing is just aim and, and decide what, what the goal is and then get started. Everything else starts to fall in place. Like I said, people tend to wait because they want everything to be right before you leave on the journey. But as they say, a journey of a thousand miles starts with that first step. You got to start stepping. And then uh, my, my, uh, my Bible class, the, the uh, teacher and the dean of my Bible class, the old Meharian, Dr. Harris said that uh, sometimes, you know, when you're, you're on the, the journey, you get to, uh, if you just, like if you get to the parking lot, the door of the, of the market is not going to open because it, it has a photo sale. You got to get close enough for the door to open, right? So it's an automatic door. But you got to break that that beam first. So you got to keep marching. And sometimes it seems as though, wow, nothing's happening. You're just not close enough. You just got to keep going, keep going, and then you'll get close enough. And all of a sudden, doors will open. You're like, wow. Or you'll have a setback. You know what you do when you have a setback? Consider that part of your education. That's the cost of education. Could have cost you a whole bunch of money. Could have cost you a lot of time but that's part of your education. You're not gonna make that same mistake again. You document that and now you learn from that and then you make it part of the process. Next time I come to this, I go around this by implementing this and that, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me see, um, another question that we have here. What advice do you have for a student who wants to emulate what you've done? <laughs> I'd say cut it shorter than what I did. I wasted too much time, Doc. I did. But you know, it, it wasn't bad in that my first four years, of course, I was with the US Public Health Service. So I went down to New Orleans and I had to pay back those four years of service. But I learned a lot about dentistry, you know. So you somehow you you are going to have to learn your trade and you're gonna have to see some patients and, and kind of figure out because at some point when you start hiring other doctors or forming a business, you want to be able to make the call based on experience and you need to get in there, get your experience. But at the same time, you need to be learning business and, and uh, a bit getting ready to apply. So, you, and a big thing is always having a plan. You know, most, a lot of people leave home and they, and they have no plan. The only plan they have is show up to where work and whatever they say do until at those eight hours are up. That's my plan. And I do that. But when you're in business for yourself, every day you should have a plan, and, you know, a step by step or, or your to do list for the year your to, you know, you have your five year plan where you want to be break it down three, one year. I know people said now that things have moved and changed and that uh, you can't plan that far out in advance, but I think it, it different. You have to have that. Um, you have to at least um, you have to, to have some kind of outwardly projection in order to, uh, uh, one second, one second, if, uh, pause. Brenda, I'm on, I'm on a conference. Can you uh, step, sorry. Okay, I think she's, my wife was, was on the phone. Um, oh, so, so uh, okay, so it's, it, is, it is a journey. But if you would like to emulate what I did, I think the main thing is learn as much as you can now, but you start the journey and you start the journey and, and say, I want to be a successful entrepreneur dentist because you have to, there are dentists and then there's entrepreneurs and an entrepreneur dentist will, will look at it from a business perspective. It is, it is a business and it's, it's a, a profession. And you want to handle it, and that, that's the beauty of it. It is one. It is the top profession. They, uh, it goes back and forth between uh, dentistry and, and uh, um, veterinarians as the top profession to be in in America. But I think dentistry because it has so much upside. If it's like you could write your own check. I'm serious. You can write your own check, but you kind of have to have a plan. But once you get that piece of paper, it's a paper that, that will allow you to write your check for as much or, or however much you want. You just have to have a plan that goes along with it. So start the journey, start your journey 
and, and uh, make sure that you have goals, aim for the right thing. Um, that's what, if you're emulating, what advice do you have students matriculating in dental school? <laughs> you know, the, the same thing I would say, uh, and especially at uh, your stage, a junior, I would say the, the one thing that kind of, I think for me, was I was glad I had one of my classmates, Dr. Foote, he used to push me when we were juniors. He was like, get your credits in, you used to sign off on this. Believe it or not, out of the 48 that started, I don't know how many graduated, I think only 12 or, 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 or 13 of us got our papers in the folder that day. And I was one of those. And everybody else kind of had to come back and get something done. Uh, didn't have the highest uh, GPA in, in the class, but that, was, that wasn't what I was shooting for. I wanted to exit on that day. So you've got to make sure if you got to get a sign off, you got to make that. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it's always, can you meet that deadline? Can you, and I call it a GSD, get stuff done or, you know, in my other vernacular, get S done. You, you do have to get stuff done. And, and some people can't, but you have to, you got to check the boxes and keep moving. Just check off the boxes and keep moving. I, my dad kind of drove us on, on that kind of stuff. You know, when he say be there and he expect you to be at a certain place at a certain time, he, he didn't allow you to not meet his expectation. You have to create that. And I think you have to run with someone who kind of pushes you the same thing. Let's get, keep moving, keep moving. Cause I, I've had classmates at, in dental school, you get caught up on one subject and trying to do too much and, and uh, on that, and then you wind up getting held back because you didn't finish on, on another thing. I'd say, you know, just keep everything so that you get checked off and you keep moving and get to the back door, you know, learn as much as you can, but matriculate, matriculate, keep moving, all right? That's a, a, a very important one. And, um, and, and uh, you ask, what do I do now? And I'm gonna show you a little bit about that, but I wanna just finish these few uh, of my um, thoughts here expectations and standards. I think that's a good one. You have to set expectations for yourself. You have to set expectations for others. And even how, you know, one, and like I said, Dr. Foote, you know, we used to run together, he's a Jamaican uh, classmate of mine, but he, he used to say, uh, it was like, Jerry, don't let them call you by your first name. You make them call you Dr. Lanier. Cause a lot of people will disrespect you, you know, and I even uh, had a guy I was going to hire once and he kept calling me Jerry. I said, well, it's going to be Dr. Lanier. Or he said, well, I'm not asking you to call me doctor. I said, are you a doctor? And he's like, I said, no, you don't have to worry, but you won't be working here. And, <laughs> you know, uh, and most of the people I know when you're young, you know, a lot of times it's in, uh, and, and then when you're around a lot of people, they want us to refer to first name and it's okay now if I was other persuasion if I was white I probably wouldn't have to hang up but I I test people sometimes just to see and I said I prefer Dr. Lanier to see if it bothers them and if they're uh if they have a problem with it I was like that's more than just you having a problem calling me Dr. Lanier for what reason it's probably because that gives they figure well not, that'll put you up here with me or higher than me so I don't know. I just create the expectation on them. This is who I expect you to call me. And this is the standard. And, you know, as far as uh, a standard, well, someone that you uh, respect and what they're doing and set a standard as, as far as the care. Because if you got somebody working for you, sometimes they come in and their standard of care is low. And you're like, damn, I don't like my patients treated that way. And why, you know, this is sloppy work or so forth is beneath your standard. Same thing with staff. If they're not doing what you expect, that's not meeting your standard. So one of the phrases that I, I, I coined over the years and I would tell people is unacceptable. That's unacceptable. I can't, I, you know, because of my standards and who I am, I can't accept that from you. And, and sometimes you just got to move on, but it's good to let people know what you did or what you're doing is unacceptable to me and I and my standard. And if you, you get that in your head and if something you don't like, or even I've worked at places, they ask you to do things that you're like, I don't want 
I don't think that's the way, you know, that's below my standard. I'm not going to do that. You got to be willing to tell someone at all times. So set expectations and even, you know, with your patients, if the way that your office looks and the way your staff, the way they dress, their, their front desk, how cleanliness, everything, it sets the expectation. Even when you walk into a place and, and you could tell sometimes like, wow, I'm going to spend some money in here, you know, because it sets your expectation. You know, you walk in a Louis Vuitton store, you know, right off, you're going to spend some money up in here. It's, it's different than walking in a 99 cent store. So you set expectations all the time. And then this is a good one. Also, uh, doubt, doubt and failure. You're going to have some failures, but don't ever let it get you to the point where you're doubting yourself. And a lot of times other people, when you talk to them, they'll start saying things that will kind of cause you to doubt yourself. But you got to go back and, and still, and this is important. I, I told you, this comes from my, my uh, the, the teacher of my Bible class. He, 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 he hated doubt. But he, he also said failure and experience is something that most people don't want to go through. They'll call and say, I don't want to go through this or that. But you got to have some experiences. And that way you start to build your confidence and you see what you can do and how you can work your way through things. And, and like I said, it's all an experience and, and uh, it's a learning experience. And, and, it, it, and it's a game. You know, really, I know a lot of people hate it when I say stuff like that because it's a profession, it's dentistry. But the business side of it, you got to look at it like a game. You're playing the game. You're using best practices. You get out there early before anybody else hits the gym. You're doing more than they're doing. You're going out of your way because, you know, it's competitive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and most people, most people, Dr. Brooks, don't like to get out of their comfort zone. They want to stay within their comfort zone. But if you're there, most of the time, you're going to just get little crumbs. You got to get out and you got to keep forcing yourself to get outside of your comfort zone. You're going to have some failures, but don't let it bring doubt. You know, you got to say, OK, I feel that that. But I've won at enough things in life that I'm, I'm still good. You know, even and, and like I said, I watch uh, basketball a lot. Shooters, they can have a slump. But the coach tell them, don't stop, keep shooting. I know you're going to get, you know, because it'll come back. You're going to hit your click again, you know. So even when you're going into a slump and everybody else start to doubt you, you're like, no, that's not me. I'm just having a little bit of bad day or whatever or a bad month. But I'm, I'm the one that clicks. So you, can, you have to have a lot of self-talk about who you are and what you're here to do. And, and for me, seriously, I kind of feel as though whatever I'm doing, I was sent here to do. I'm just passing through this life, you know. I'm not, you know, this is just something I'm experiencing. I'm soon gone, you know, and it seemed like I just got here, but I know I'll soon be gone. And, and you can't take any of this shit with you, you know what I mean? You can't. It's, and so you never owned anything, but it's nice to play the game. And when you play the game, you win, you, uh, the scoreboard is, is dollar sign. When you're winning, it's dollar signs. And, and you don't get too carried away with it when you're winning. Uh, you know, I, I put that thing, if, if you, you know, can treat these imposters all the same, you know, when you're winning or when you're losing, it's just an imposter. You're just passing through and you have the experience. When you win, you celebrate and don't get too carried away with it. You go back and repeat. If you lose, you write it up, you document, this is what I'm not going to do. Next time I'm going to do this or that and you, you keep going like that. But do see it as competition. It's a, it's a game. You're not necessarily competing with the guy down the street. That's not necessarily your competition. You're competing with yourself to get better all the time and, and use best practices and, and do that kind of thing. And, and always remember, like I said, you cannot take it with you. This stuff is just temporal and it's fun to have and the number sign and so forth. And I think about it now. I said, I don't want, I'm doing too much. My kids may not do work. And they're like, oh, dad, you did everything. Let me just kick back, <laughs> you know? But I'm gone anyway. Once you're gone, you're gone. You're not going to worry about it. So I just do, but I do have fun doing what I'm doing, you know, because I, uh, let me show you one thing. How did I have that? Uh, where was it? I went here. I, uh, oh, 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 I had another one. I went to the, 
screen share. I want to go to a different screen share. Sc new screen. You are screen sharing. Yeah. I can't get it. Into now, if I go to screen share, I'll show you one other thing. This. So here's what I'm doing now. Uh, and let me see if I can move that out the way. Anyway, um, life-changing opportunity. And these are two of the locations that I have. Uh, in one in, uh, in Fresno, California here, and another one in Visalia. These are brand new de novo locations, just built them out, the beautiful interiors and so forth. So um, and these are turnkey offices. Everything is there, and I'm just starting to advertise them. They, uh, this one is 4,200 square feet. This one is huge. It's got adult ortho and kids to dentists. The kids to dentists is the, the main brand. I used to do kids dental care. So I do pediatrics and it's, uh, these are in, all in central California. I have uh, two more under construction and another one that I'm, I'm purchasing now. So uh, I run this ad. I just place this ad everywhere, you know. <laughs> It, uh, it is, it's everywhere. And now we're doing our intake, inbound calls to get to doctors, the staff and so forth. And I partner, I'm not trying to, um, at this point with these and I'll take it off, stop the screen share. So what I'm doing rather than, than hiring uh, associates, I'm doing this time different. Before I owned 14, when I sold, I had owned about 20 offices, but I always had associates working for me. I'm, I'm too old for that now. I want people working with me, partners. They're owner doctors. They put some skin in the game and I know how to make it all work. I'm, I'm a partner with them. And since they're younger, they could be the providers right there, manager, doctors. Uh, when do you graduate soon? Okay, good. I'm gonna have a position for you, doctor. You have, you just come out and it's already there. And I lay it out and it's almost impossible not to get rich or, or wealthy when you're with me, because I, I just, it, it's just over the years, seriously, I'm a businessman. And that's what I've been doing so long to the point, I pretty much know what I'm doing. You know, I, I actually, I did a, an executive MBA, but that helped me some, but more, more so, I've been trying things for 30 some years, you know, I tried everything. I got it wrong every way you, you can imagine, but, um, but now it's clicking. I mean, you know, on all cylinders. It, even once I sold the practice, invested in stocks, and I had tried stock market for years, and I had tried and I had lost and tried and lost. But finally, I, I started to learn some things. And then when I finally got out, and then when you, you get to that square, you're an investor. And now I'm a pretty damn good investor, you know, making things happen like that. I can't believe it. You know, I do in that, like I said, I believe that I'm guided spiritually and that, you know, the creator laid everything out for me and that still small voice that's telling you where to go. And as long as I do and I don't get too carried away, because I think that, that the, my downfall would be if money became, you know, like to say the love of money, not money, the love of money. And I try to keep myself pretty much detached from that and just say, I'm here for the experience and playing the game. I like that. And just playing the game. And I've been doing too much talking. I'm going to let you talk. Tell me about your experiences, where you are, what you're thinking as far as business and, and what do you see as the obstacles, fears, and so forth that you may have to confront. And, and what do you see yourself um, having to, to confront to get there? Oh, so right now, like you said, um, I'm in my third year at Meharry. Um, so right now I'm trying to wrap my head around the dentistry, uh, kind of trying to understand the different techniques and kind of trying to perfect the craft. Well, I know that's going to be over time because that's the practice of dentistry. Um, however, obstacles um, that I'm going to perceive face. Perceived obstacles that might be in front of you, because all of them are just what you perceive, if you perceive anything as maybe an obstacle. So as of right now, um, the obstacle that lies in front of me at dental school is just trying to make up for the a lot of time we lost in COVID yeah. and trying to have the skills of a third year student because um, most of our, the end of our first year uh, was taken away. 
Mm -hmm. um and then sort of the beginning and then we had to do things in two groups so that split the class up and so a lot of um gaining my skills is on me so like you said I have to put in those 10,000 hours to be good and be ready to see patients yeah. and to leave school because like I said I do have 18 months so what I'm trying to do right now is to develop a plan where I can get into those hours after school and put in that work to, you know, mm -hmm. become good at this, you know, become good at my trade. Right. So that's the current obstacle that I have right now. But like you said, we get over those, you know, they're not going to be in my face forever. So all I have to do is just kind of put in the work um, and do the things that I need to do. So that's what I'm currently facing. That's that's wonderful. I think that it, you're right. You, you have those things that you know, we, it was, uh, it was nature. We had nothing that we could do. It was just force of nature. Things came and, uh, uh, well, I guess it could have started things a little bit earlier, but it is what it is. And that's another thing you deal with what's in front of you, you know, uh, and, and another thing that, that happens is always try to look at, well, if by and large, the rest of the groups of people can achieve this, of course I could do it. So right. we're always thinking that way, of course I could do it because I'm I'm probably the top five percent, you know, I'm in that top five whenever it, it it needed to be. And just see it that way and continue to just push. I think that you you the ten thousand ten thousand hours is so huge. You do have to do it, but try to try to focus it if you can on certain things. Of course, yeah, as a dentist, you, you want to get all the general dentistry there, but once you are out, look for certain things. So I'm going to limit kind of my practice to this area rather than trying to be all things to all people. It's, it, it's not good. I had a friend from New Orleans that gave me a card one time and it had Joe Atman Services in capital letters, Joe Atman. And I was like, that's not your name. What do you get? Joe Atman. He said, no, it means jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> I was like, damn, man, that's not the kind of charge you want to be passing out. But that was pretty much what he was. It was just a handyman, jack of all trades. But, you know, the more you can kind of specialize and not just um, that, though, but uh, I think the specialization allows you to get those 10,000 hours in. And then you're better at something. And when you represent yourself as as being able to do something, you could say, no, I'm, I'm probably in the top five, 10% that, that do this because this is pretty much all I do. And, and you can focus, you'll know a lot about it as you talk to other people and so forth. So I, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else, but I'm also trying to keep our time so that we're not making it too long. And because I do long videos, you know, I get to talking and then uh, when I post them, people will say, well, Jerry, you're not supposed to make videos that long. You're supposed to cut them and make them short. I can't make a short video and get, a, get the points across. I want to do more. So I, I, what I would like to do is, uh, and, you know, over the, the year, we'll start doing every few months or six months. We'll do another one or maybe we'll do one every three months. And I'm going to do another one with a, a doctor that I mentored. Uh, she's now been practicing about five, six years, but she was uh, my first protege. And I didn't, the school or, or no one really asked. She just kind of picked me. You're my mentor because actually her sister worked for me and she wound up becoming a dentist and, uh, and just always said that I, I, gave her a lot of mentoring. So I enjoy it. And like I said, I'm going to, uh, as I, I'm going to share some things about these practices, I want you to consider it because in the long run, the more you know about it and when the opportunity comes, just be ready. You know, when the opportunity finally comes, you're ready. You're like, no, this is my opportunity because this is what I, I really believe, Kim, that Yahweh of God, he, he has a path for us. But most of the time, we're not listening to the voice inside that's guiding us. And, you know, and I figure, one, if he put me in your path, then that was, that was by his choice. And if he put you in my path, then he, he did that for a reason. So because our paths connect, you make the best of it. And you just listen to what else he says. And I'm glad that we are able to, to make this. And, and I'm here for you. And, and if something happened to me, Guys out here, 
this is my protege. I want you to look out for her through thick and thin. You make sure that you look out for Dr. Kia Brooks. She is going to be a top doc out there. Entrepreneur dentist, declare yourself an entrepreneur dentist and just go for it and do whatever an entrepreneur dentist would do, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We will do another one soon. Do you have any more questions? Oh, no, you gave me a lot that I need to think about <laughs> and reflect over. Yeah. Yeah, this is so good. It, it is great. Let's do this again soon. Thank you so much, Doc. Okay. All right. You take care. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye now.